it's time for Moral Victory Monday from Allen Park. You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's a Monday edition, everybody. Locked on Lions on the Locked On Podcast Network. Matt Derry with you. Monday, September 12th and a Tuesday, September 13th. Lions fresh off a three-point loss yesterday to the Philadelphia Eagles down at Ford Field. Now getting there ready, getting their sights set on Washington. The 1-0 Carson Wentz-led commanders coming in town. We'll talk about it on the uh, crossover podcast and the crossover Thursday with Chris Russell, the host of Lockdown Commanders, coming up later on this week. Working on a couple of guests for the next couple of days as well. And we want to kind of do a deeper dive into what took place yesterday. We'll do that coming up right here on this Monday edition of Lockdown Lions. Thanks for making us your first listen each and every day. And of course, you can follow us on Twitter at Dairy Speaks, D E R Y Speaks, at Lockdown Lions on Twitter, the Matt Dairy Facebook fan page, and YouTube channel, Lockdown Lions YouTube, where you can catch the video each and every day on YouTube. Uh, We appreciate you guys watching, listening, paying attention. What a crowd yesterday. Look, the Lions didn't play all that well. Dan Campbell has now set it for two straight days, both post-game and today at his Monday press conference. They can clean up a lot of things. They can play a lot better. But yesterday's crowd was incredible. This franchise and organization has been nothing but the doldrums for years. The whole SOL thing even when the Lions were winning and going to the playoffs with nine win seasons under Jim Caldwell, there was still <laughs> disappointment, let down, players leaving, players retiring, Sue leaves, Calvin retire, all these things. Then the team bottoms out under Quinn Trisha. Last year, they win three football games, three out of 17. And yet here they were yesterday opening up against Philly, and the fans were incredible. That crowd was unreal. It was so loud. Panay Sewell said today he couldn't even hear Jared Goff barking out the signals on offense. But you got to give credit to the fans. I I, I, I tip my cap to you guys, man, and girls, and everybody that was there. Um, I did hear from a couple of people, very long lines, uh, not enough concession workers, Come on, Rod, get on it, fix it. I did hear from some people that it was not the greatest experience yesterday, but the game itself was exciting. Once again, this football team, uh, you know, moral victory uh, central here. They played well at times, but most of all couldn't stop Philadelphia. And uh, we're going to get to uh, PFF grades today, top five and bottom five, which we do every Monday. Uh, I got some uh, uh, stats about the run defense. Uh, We got to talk about, Uh, Dan Campbell's comments today on two players, Malcolm Rodriguez and Levi Onzerike. And I also, uh, you know, want to say this. Um, Jared Goff has to be better. You know, we can sit here and talk about, well, Aiden Hutchinson didn't have a good game. The defense didn't play well and all these things. And yes, Goff, you know, had a couple of touchdown passes, one to Chark, another one to St. Brown. He also threw a pick six. But you look around the league and you see how, how when teams get it done and when certain teams have certain quarterbacks that elevate their game and they get the win, you know, and with Jared Goff, it's time for his game to elevate. It's time to see better play. There were some good throws yesterday. The throw to Chark was a great throw. It wasn't a good throw, a great throw. But Jalen Hurts yesterday made so many plays. Made so many plays. Jameis Winston at the end of that Saints-Falcons game was making plays to get his team the win. Justin Fields wasn't great yesterday for the Bears, but he made plays, and so did Kirk Cousins. Uh, And and the Vikings went over the Packers. Jared Goff has got to start playing better. We've heard all the stuff in the offseason. Now he's got the new OC and Ben Johnson. Things are going to be different. You know, I, I don't need to see it by week 10 or 11 when this team's out of it. I need to see it now. So that's number one. Number two, let's talk about the pro football focus, uh, top five and bottom five players, and we'll do a deep dive into it. 
Um, good news on the injury front. I've not seen anything major coming out of yesterday's game um, injury-wise. So that is a good sign with Washington again coming to town uh, this weekend. Um, as far as top five offensive players, not a surprise. Number one, he was the highest rated Lion at, 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 in any level, offense, defense, special teams. Uh, DeAndre Swift with a grade of 82.3. Career high in rushing yards over a buck 40 on the ground. Made a couple of plays in the passing game. Made people miss. DeAndre Swift looks awesome. Looks excellent. And all that stuff on hard knocks and in the preseason, do Staley challenging him. Yesterday, he was as advertised. He was really, really good. Panay Sewell, the team's right tackle, comes in second with a 79.8 grade. Always solid. Third, TJ Hawkinson, 69.1. Um, I need to see more from TJ Hawkinson. I really do. If he's going to get this fat contract and get, um, uh, uh, um, you know, David and Joku money and the kid from Buffalo, his name escapes me. It's been a long day. Um, you, you know, I, I'm going to need to see more from TJ. Jonah Jackson, 67.6. DJ Chark, 66.1. Those are your top five offensive performers from our, from our friends at Pro Football Focus and PFF.com. Bottom five Lions on offense yesterday. Right guard Logan Stenberg checked in at a 25.9. He played all 69 offensive snaps. 25.9? Jeez, that's horrible. That is horrid. Frank Ragnow, second to last, 48.0. Of course, Frank had a groin injury, hamstring issue, played through it. But if you grade him out and you really watch the tape like the folks at PFF do, uh, not a good performance. 49.5 for Jared Goff, third worst. Again, unacceptable. Must be better. Jamal Williams, 55.0. And Josh Reynolds, 56.4. That's a minimum of at least 15 snaps. I'm not going to talk about Khalif Raymond's eight snaps or Matt Nelson's five snaps. Stenberg, Ragnow, Goff, Williams, and Reynolds picking up the rear here when it comes to the offense. And again, I'll say it again about Jared Goff. I mean, especially this week against Washington. Now the the uh, commanders come in. Uh, their second round pick, their big D tackle is going to be done for the year. They're already without Chase Young. We'll see if he plays this week. Um, there's no excuses. We need to see better quarterback play, period, from Jared Goff. It's being paid like it. He's the guy. Got to see it. Want to see it. So, um, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I uh, want to tell you, let's go to the defense. We'll do that coming up next. But what about our friends at Brightco? Oh, my goodness gracious. You don't want to be that guy, and you certainly don't want it to be splattered all over the Internet. The guys at Brightco Jewelry Insurance will make sure you get a replacement for the full value of that ring. You know what I'm talking about. Whether it's the engagement ring, the wedding ring, you can't find it. You're looking everywhere. Oh, my gosh, what did I do with this thing? It might be lost. It might have been stolen. You can't figure out what happened to it. You're looking around, and it's killing you. But if you go to Brightco, they're going to take care of you. Bright.co, B-R-I-T-E dot C-O forward slash lockdown. Go there. It's the fastest, easiest, and cheapest way to cover your butt with the best jewelry insurance in the business. These guys at Brightco, they're geniuses. They made buying insurance for your engagement ring, your watch, or whatever, so flipping easy, you can get covered in two minutes right on your cell phone. You won't find a better deal on great coverage that's super affordable at bright, B-R-I-T-E dot co forward slash locked on. All right. Bright goes turn the ex insurance experience into something more fun. And they got great videos on their website to give you an example of what we're talking about. It's like five bucks a month. It's awesome. You got to see the videos. Bright co is a bunch of these hilarious videos that you can see for yourself at bright.co, C-O, forward slash, locked on. All right, defensive performances from yesterday. Let me say this, and I said it on the post game, the postcast yesterday. Aiden Hutchinson did not have a good game, all right? I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm telling any tales here, but he's played one NFL game. I knew going into this game against Philadelphia with all that RPO and all that Run pass option, faking, Jalen Hurts moving. It would be a long day for, for Aiden Hutchinson. I think he will bounce back and play much better this weekend. 
But let me say this about this defense. Um, I watched a lot of the game again last night. I was rewinding, looking at plays. This linebacker core, not named Malcolm Rodriguez, is just terrible. It really is. And I know that Brad Holmes is not going to be drafting linebackers early. All right? He went with Panay Sewell over Micah Parsons. We could go there ad nauseum. But this linebacking core needs a lot of work. That second level, they couldn't tackle. The angles were poor. I get it. Jalen Hurts can really run. And that's a tough defense or tough offense to stop, especially when they're doing all that run-pass option stuff. But, man, the D-tackles and the linebackers were brutal yesterday. Did anybody watch, like, Alex Anzalone on the, I think it was the Miles Sanders, or maybe it was... um, I'm trying to remember which one-yard touchdown run it was. It was the uh, north end zone. Just watch Anzalone on a couple of those dive plays, the one-yard touch, the, the one-yard touchdown runs. He's like shying away from. He's like running away from the ball. Come on, man, you're a veteran player. Uh, all right, on defense, top five Lions on defense. Malcolm Rodriguez comes in number one, seventy-three point four, a rookie, six-round pick. That's awesome. He played well. Deshaun Elliott, strong safety, 70.7. Chris Board, linebacker, 70.3. All right, he wasn't terrible, I guess. Tracy Walker, 70.1 before he was ejected. What a bad look that was yesterday for a captain to be tossed out of the game. I get that you didn't mean to go uh, uh, helmet to helmet on Jalen Hurts. Then some Eagles came after him and stuff. You got to walk away. Throwing a punch, uh, 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 grazing an official, and getting ejected is just brutal, especially when you're a captain. And they need you, and you were the leading tackler. Mike Hughes, a 67.4. Let me let me bring something up real fast. Here are the names that I just mentioned. Rodrigo, Elliott, Board, Walker, and Hughes. That list at the top, when we talk about top performers, needs to be the Lions' best defensive players. All right? It needs to be those types of guys. It needs to be the guys they've spent a lot of capital on, whether it's draft or free agency. When Deshaun Elliott, Mike Hughes, and Chris Board are three of your top five defensive performers, that's not a good sign. Bottom five. Derek Barnes, who who continues to unimpress with PFF, this poor kid, 29.3, played 21 snaps. Juju Hughes, second, 36.9. Alex Anzalone, Gaines Media, Rob Diddy, poster boy, 40.3, PFF grade. Michael Brockers, 41.4. Great leader, captain. Veteran, wants to be here, beloved in that room, but talk about a regression. Jeez. And Benito Jones, 41.5. Um, Aiden Hutchinson came in at what? 56.3. You want to be 60 or, or above. I mean, Isaiah Bugs was sixth. You're, 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 that's the best defensive lineman grade was Isaiah Bugs. There's people watching the game yesterday. They didn't even know number 96 was at the start of the game. So too many points given up again. Too many yards given up again. Listen to some of these numbers. Um, I took some notes. Our crack research staff was all over it uh, per usual. Thank you to the staff. Listen to some of these stats when it comes to Dan Campbell's defenses the last couple of years. All right. Uh, The Lions have allowed 130 or more rushing yards in four consecutive week one home games, which is tied for the sixth longest streak in NFL history. They've allowed 130 plus yards uh, at home 2018, 2020, 2021, and 2022 to open the season. The 216 rushing yards allowed is a new franchise record for the most allowed at home by a Lions team in week one. They broke a, a, a team record. Previous high was 187 in 1951. It was the seventh worst overall home or away in team history for a season opener as the Eagles ran all over them. 
Last time the Lions allowed over 200 rushing yards in a season opener was 08 uh, at Atlanta when they allowed 318 rushing yards to open the, that's correct, 0-16 season. Should I keep going on? Uh, <laughs> oh, goodness gracious, where is it? The last five years, the Lions have allowed a league worst 298 points during the first two weeks of the season, allowing 30, 33.1 points over the nine games played. Second worst is Atlanta with 275 points allowed, 30.6 points per game. The 79 points allowed over the past two seasons under Dan Campbell in the season opener is the worst in the NFL. Second is Jacksonville with 65 points allowed. Last year, remember, the Lions gave up, what, 41 to the Niners? Gotta get stops. Have to get some stops. My goodness gracious. Aaron Glenn is a good defensive coordinator. And maybe, you know, I didn't think scheme was a problem yesterday. I liked blitzing. They just couldn't corral hurts. And then they made just too many mistakes. And they couldn't stop the run either, even on those dive plays. That third and one to Sanders that, that broke the game open and basically sealed the deal. Anzalone and Barnes were right there. They both whiffed. Dan Campbell spoke today. Uh, two comments that I want to highlight. We're going to do those um, coming up next. First, what about our friends at Prize Picks, baby? Daily fantasy that is so much fun. And you're going up against the Prize Picks um, projections. All right? Get your entries in for tonight's Monday night game between Denver and Seattle. Tonight, let's do it. All right? Take Russell Wilson to throw for more than 320 passing yards. At the same time, you could take uh, Geno Smith to throw for less than 200 yards. You may have want to put uh, um, uh, some money down on one of the receivers to do something for Denver or Seattle. You know, do it up. DK Metcalf, is he going to catch less than three and a half passes or more than three and a half passes? All of that is at prizepicks.com. You pick two to five players, and if they, go, well, if they score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. No competing against other people, it's just you against the projections available. Prize picks offers projections on any sport you watch. So tonight you can do an NFL one, you can do an MLB one. There's also NBA, NHL, eSports, NASCAR, uh, MMA, European basketball, cricket. They got it all. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Download the Prize Picks app on your phone or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, Prize Picks is going to give you $100. If you deposit $50, they'll give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. All right, Monday edition of Locked On Lions, Locked On Podcast Network. Hope everybody uh, had a good weekend despite the loss yesterday. I don't want to hear about moral victories. I, I heard something yesterday. Dan, moral victories. Oh, come on, Lomas. I thought that, you know, thought they played better, Dan. Last year they lost 44 to 6. No, 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 no. It's time to win. That game was there yesterday. Philadelphia couldn't stop the Lions. The Lions offense looked really good. I'm still Ben Johnson did a good job yesterday for the most part, but man, DeAndre Swift dominated that first drive, and then the next three drives are passing the ball. Get the ball to 32. All right, Dan Campbell today said two very important things. Number one, Malcolm Rodriguez, he said, had no missed assignments yesterday. Again, we're talking about a rookie playing in his first NFL game who was supposed to just be a special teams guy and a guy that they were going to develop this year. He won that middle linebacker job or one of the inside linebacker jobs. And he's been fantastic. And Campbell says today he didn't have any missed assignments at all. That's a first year player going up against a pretty darn good offense that last year put up a 44 burger on, on him. That's number one. Number two, Dan Campbell said today that Levi owns Arike's back injury. Isn't getting any better. And quote, not progressing the way we hoped, end quote. 
Wow. The second round jinx lives on. They need Pascal and Onzerike on that defense on that defensive line. Do you know how many John Kaminsky played? How many snaps did John Kaminsky play yesterday? No offense to John Kaminsky, new dad. 26 snaps. Isaiah Bugs played 39 snaps. They drafted Owns Rike in round two and Pascal in round two. I know Pascal's more of an edge guy, but they'll move him inside sometimes. But it's just like anybody. DeAndre Swift is, is going to break the second round jinx, but like that was, it's been bad since Darius Slay. I don't have to go back and talk about Jelani Tavai or Tees, do I? But man, Owns Rike, what is going on? Not progressing at all like the way they hoped. When are we going to see this kid? And people are out there. I got to hit me up on Twitter at Dairy Speaks. Oh, let's sign Sue. Why is there any money? They're right at the cap right now. And Dominic and Sue wants big money if he's going to play. And you're not going to give him that. You don't have it. So I do see some positives because I, I think when Pascal, Romeo Quara, Jamison Williams, these guys come back, this team's going to be better. All right, I'm not sitting here today saying, oh, the season's over. No, they lost one game. I wasn't even expecting them to win. Um, but they got to clean some stuff up for sure. And this week, Washington, you got to win this game. Lions are two and a half point favorites, according to Bet Online. You got to win this game. 0 and 2, and then you got to go to Minnesota? Uh oh. Got to win. Washington's not that good. They were trailing Jacksonville for most of the day yesterday. Carson Wentz does nothing for me. Put him on the turf this week. All right. Monday edition of Locked On Lions. Thanks for making us your first listen. Subscribe on YouTube. Talk to you again tomorrow.